Hello, everyone. Hello. It is Monday. I've been in my house for half an hour today, but that doesn't matter because I'm here with you all. Uh, we're talking Star Wars Visions tonight. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited for this Memorial Day show. We got a full crew here, minus one who is already sweating bullets. We'll get into that in a second. But before anything else happens, oh, nothing makes me feel more at home than telling Wes to punch it. a UTD Network podcast tonight, all about Star Wars Vision Season 2. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Eilerson, and joining me tonight to talk all about the newest animated project from Star Wars is a full crew, maybe not the one you're used to. Starting off, though, we have the man who was watching the F1 race in Monaco this weekend, not physically, it's Dr. Corey Halton! What's up, buddy? What? is happening i did watch f1 monaco yesterday and i also watched the indy 500 all the way all the way from beginning to end yesterday too it's the first time i've ever watched the indy 500 too and uh it was pretty good they rigged the ending almost as bad as formula one rigs the end of race so, <laughs> you felt right you know, at home <laughs> yeah i felt like right at home it was perfect um yeah monaco was yesterday had a blast caitlin and i got up early and watched that um monaco is the one if you're not familiar with formula one it's the one that is in uh the iron man movie you know where he gets in the car and the guy <laughs> oh my god yeah whips. that's monaco it's one with all the boats and all the celebrities and it's crazy um that's monaco it's uh typically not a very fun race to watch because it's a historical track that's been around since 1929 and the cars have gotten a lot bigger since 1929 so like <laughs> it's almost impossible to pass at monaco so it typically is not a very fun race to watch because nothing happens but it started raining with about 30 laps left and all hell broke loose when that happened because it was it was super soaked on one half of the track and not soaked at all on the other half of the track so like you know, they're like hauling ass on one part of the track and then they're sliding all over the place and smashing into each other and smashing into the walls. And it's, it's just, it was a disaster. So it was fun. I had a really good time. And, uh, <laughs> immediately after Monaco, uh, I got to hang out with Tim and his wife, Hannah, uh, it was fun. They came, they came over from Knoxville to come visit and we went and got donuts and went and drank some beer and had a good old time. It was a good, good time. We had, we had fun yesterday. So good weekend. Good weekend. It sounds super solid. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna how we're gonna measure up to that because it sounds like you had a weekend that was as glorious and as fulfilling and uh, as potentially disastrous as Wes Jenkins. What's up, man? Hey, what's up? Um, did we want to get in to what I did this weekend? Because sure, why thought, not? Uh, Screw okay. the format. Just run sure. into it. Um, I want to know. I traveled up to Lake Limestone, which is in Grosbeck, Texas. Um, I'll just give you Central Texas. How about that? Um, it's like <laughs> I an need hour, la longitude and latitude. I need to like understand an hour this. <laughs> east of Waco, something like that. Um, but we went out to the lake um, and let's see. I rode on a tube, three person tube, got pulled by a uh, souped up jet ski. Um, nice. I felt the G forces when uh, <laughs> they were whipping around. So like I was Oof, I held I on. I held on from the, the life of me and I was the last one on tube until I everybody got climbed back on and then they did it again and eventually my arms gave out and i had to fly off and went in uh, end over end but nice. it was a great time um <clears throat> it's fun kind of getting out sore. of your element and doing that but today <laughs> my arms are sore because i was holding on yeah i know knuckles over and knuckles under and i was just holding like this the whole there you time go. the deadlift grip baby <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. good <laughs> So well, your arms are sore, which which makes sense because your back is usually sore from carrying the weight of this entire show. So uh, I'm glad thanks, it's evening out. Thanks a lot, Eric. That's not actually what happens, but you know, thank you for being <laughs> back. We appreciate it. <laughs> oh yeah, I missed you guys. I missed you guys. Um, but we'll get into my in, into why I almost missed this week again in a second. But we do not have Dr. Charles Hankel tonight um, because, as some of you may know shockingly tonight is actually game seven of the eastern conference finals didn't we think it would only be four five or six games we sure did uh but charles's heart rate is going to spike in about 23 minutes so um 
thoughts and prayers, sorrows, the prayers, everything to that uh, for Charles tonight. Uh, but in his stead, of course, we have the the man who was mentioned already on this show, uh, who did see Corey this weekend with his lovely wife, and that is Mr. Timothy Guthrie. Welcome, buddy. What's up, y'all? Thanks for having me back. Um, I am not Charles. This is clearly a much more pasty representation of a, a white male. Um, but <laughs> Charles is pretty I, pasty. Charles is pretty he pasty. Is. So, okay, pretty maybe it's a fair substitution. Um, in his honor, I, I did rock the lights red, you know, for the heat. Yeah. So in oh, solidarity. Awesome. I'm, you know, I just gotta gotta carry that. But no, it was fun. We got to uh, see Corey and Caitlin this weekend. Um, we drove up primarily just to spend money, and Corey is a great enabler. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we. <laughs> Did. we went and bought some very helpful drinks we uh went to the west elm outlet and bought a quilt because you know adulting when you're Ooh. Ooh. um oh and i felled a couple of trees uh yes we have a ridiculous backyard i did not want to spend 130 dollars on a chainsaw so i found a handsaw that we had just kind of laying around and uh just took three or four or five little trees out they had like six inch diameters is it it great Ooh. not sore at all <laughs> See, you should have, you should have filmed that story. for the Patreon. I've seen some TikToks. I think we could have made some traction on that, man. No, it's mostly embarrassing. So maybe you're right. Maybe it would have been good <laughs> next time. Next time, I got you. <laughs> well, well done, man. Uh, Sal. Also, you mentioned it. I'm, I'm going to change my lights back here for our YouTube crowd. All right, I got to go. You can't wait really tell, but they are red now for the heat to help Charles out. Do everything we can. Um, I'm gonna I change, I'm gonna I change mine to green real quick. Hold on a second. Wes Wesley <laughs> Wes Wes Wes. I will come. I will come through. Don't this. you dare! <laughs> I will cut um, my video feed, sir. Absolutely not in this house. Um. So I I said earlier in the show I've only been back in my house for about forty minutes now because uh, Charlie and I went to a wedding this weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend, so we had the day off today, and we went to a wedding in Philadelphia unexpectedly. Um. It was a bit of a last minute thing, but. We went to uh, one of her friends from college's wedding. It was lovely. We drove all the way there from Charlotte on Saturday, which is about a nine-hour drive or so. Wedding was yesterday. They woke up this morning. We stopped in Washington, D.C. for a second, saw some folks in Richmond, and then just drove all the way back. I stepped into my house at about 7.20 p.m., and now it's 8.09. So uh, it was a wild, uh, quick weekend, but, uh, but it was lovely. Um, easy drive. The wedding was great. Um, got to meet some people that I never met before and drank responsibly because I'm in my thirties now had those Shirley temples between courses, folks. I'm telling you, it just, it helps you out as the night goes on longer, but, uh, definitely had a lovely time and very happy to be back with you guys. Um, I missed you. I missed you dearly when I'm, when I'm off. So I thought I was going to be gone, but I'm very happy to be back. Um, and mostly I'm happy to be back with all you folks watching and listening, uh, most importantly, of course, our friends over at patreon.com slash utini. And we do have our Patreon manager, Timothy, with us tonight. Uh, Tim, we do have something special coming for the folks this week on Patreon. Why don't you tell them what it is? Yeah, we actually have a couple of fun somethings. Do it. Uh, the first one is, well, I guess second one, actually. On June 1st, um, Eric, the person who was just talking, the wonderful light of life that he is, oh, you. is dropping a uh, collection video, like kind of going through, because now, you know, you got a house, you're a mm -hmm. homeowner, and you've got lightsabers everywhere, you got Funkos everywhere. Um, we thought it'd be really fun to give a whole kind of dig into your your collection. So uh, that's going to drop on June 1st. And then um, a couple of days before that, I think on Wednesday, actually. So y'all just did Yoda week, right? Yes, that's what happened absolutely. Last we week. OK, I'm not behind at all. Um, <laughs> let, over the course of the Legends Look Back episode, they realized that neither Freddie nor Emily had ever seen the bad lip reading seagulls the video uh, like like what? yoda from, that's right we just, we just talked about they, that reference that uh yeah on the yoda episode yeah the, uh, <laughs> yep. they had so. they had never never seen it so after the episode last week they stayed on and recorded a reaction video of the four of them watching the whole thing <gasps> and it is yes so freaking hilarious so i think that's going to go up sometime wednesday before their next show so they can talk about it and nice. shout it out some so um, yeah, that'll be up. Um, they're also in the process of scheduling their uh, Empire Strikes Back commentary because um, they dropped a new nice. hope uh, back a couple weeks ago. Um, we also have another Patreon event that is in planning stages, um, probably led uh, by Trevor and Jared. So it's going to be insane. Oh, so, boy. Uh, get ready for that. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent pairing. <laughs> I love that. 
Uh, so a lot of stuff coming. Thank you again so to everyone who's over there on the Patreon. Uh, we're, I'm really excited this year. We're, we're getting to bring so many folks on the Utini team together because I know we, we talk about it as much as we can. Utini is a huge team of folks uh, with a ton of varied talents and a ton of, a ton of varied interests within Star Wars. So we love to show you as much of us as possible. So keep an eye out this week uh, for those drops. I'm not sure when exactly they will be scheduled on those dates, but check your Patreon feeds. And again, go to patreon.com slash Utini. It's never too late to sign up binge everything we have and then immediately stop i don't know it's your finances i don't control you but i doubt you'll want to leave once you're here uh no new star wars this news this week uh it's been a pretty good week they celebrated the 40th anniversary of return of the jedi so there's a lot of stuff there um shout out to return of the jedi good movie um but uh going forward we do have a lot of star wars cut it's fine you know we're not doing an episode <laughs> about it so who cares uh, but there's a lot of new stuff coming up in the coming months. Uh, we do not have a giant book release coming in June. However, in July, there is Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade by Delilah S. Dawson. As a reminder, you're going to want to go to the Utini release schedule. Make sure you get those pre-orders in for that novel. Uh, we talked about the excerpt that got released last week a little bit, so you definitely do not want to miss that. But this week is, is about, in fact, some of the more recent Star Wars content that we've had. Uh, Star Wars Visions. Uh, so I'm wearing my, you can't really see it, I'm wearing my Vision Season 1 shirt today. <laughs> uh, nice. We talked about Visions uh, when Season 1 came out. Uh, I think we were all pretty big fans of it on the whole. Uh, some episodes were better than others. Um, we really kind of went back and forth. We did a couple episodes about them. This week, uh, we're going to talk about the first four episodes of Season 2. So this goes through uh, the episodes Sith, Screechers Reach, In the Stars, and I Am Your Mother. Um, if you don't want any spoilers for Visions, maybe take a pause, check out those four shorts, and come back. We're going to talk about what happens in them. Visions are kind of harder to spoil, I will say, but proceed at your own risk. Uh, but before we get into Season 2, folks, I want to go ahead and ask you guys, just pretty bluntly, what did you think of Visions Season 1 as a whole, if folks don't remember or you didn't get to say it last year? And overall, how would you compare your enjoyment of Season 2 to your process with season one um tim as our honored guest i want to go to you first my friend yeah sure uh season one i felt was okay in general um i think there were only two or three episodes that really stuck out to me um the village bride being my absolute favorite mm. um, i know that was mm -hmm. big, big for a lot of people um i it, i'm not an anime guy um particularly you know that that particular style and and that kind of storytelling technique um so some of it was lost on me but I appreciated the take, um, the, sure. like kind of the idea that they were going. I think this season, leaps and bounds, storytelling gripped me through and through. Um, even if I was not a fan of some of the animation styles, I fell in love with a lot of the story. I think they did an excellent job. And honestly, it introduced me to some studios that I'd never heard of, some animation styles that I wouldn't typically watch. Um, and I think that's kind of the, the highlight of these Visions projects is to um, get us in. So... Uh, yeah, I I found this one much better than than season one for sure. Nice, like in the variety. Um, Corey, how did this one hit you, man? Yeah, I'm I'm I feel funny about uh, visions in general. I think because like I think it's an interesting project. It's just it seems to be a little bit of a. I'm surprised that Disney's put the investment into it. I guess is a good way to say it. Totally fair. Totally fair. It's like because it's it's a one and done thing. I don't feel like I'm ever going to rewatch it. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to yeah, watch it the sure. one one time all the way through and we'll have a one conversation about it and then I'll forget that it exists. Like it's kind of how I, I feel about, about visions. Like not that it's not good. It's just, it's a, the thing that I don't like about visions that I think is the biggest like sort of turnoff for me is the fact that it doesn't exist within the context of, of star Wars really. You know what I mean? Like yeah. season one, I haven't finished season two yet. Uh, I'm intentionally finishing it as we watch the, yep. as we watch it and talk about it on the show um but uh season one like doesn't follow the rules you know what i mean like it's <laughs> yeah it kind of exists in star wars but the only thing that really makes it star wars is that they have lightsabers and there's jedi and sith you know what i mean so like mm -hmm. uh, i i don't like that i think like i think that it it would work better if they just did animation and then like also you it kind of has to fit into the rules a little bit so you know it's 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 tricky i i enjoy it i enjoy watching it i don't think it's as meaningful i guess 
to me because it, it doesn't even exist in like legend. It's like legends or canon. It's like somewhere else. You know, right. It's a mythical right. thing, right? So it's kind of out there. So I don't love that about it. That's the one thing that I really wish that I w- they had they had done was uh, make it fit within the the context of Star Wars canon and, you know, um, um, but uh, the animation is really fun. The storytelling is fun. The artistic style and having to kind of like think about like what is this thing that they're trying to say? That's kind of fun, I guess, too. Mm-hmm. Like, but um, yeah, I'm a little more lukewarm about the entire project uh, compared to I think most people. When it dropped, everybody was freaking out on the team, though. So I know that some people are absolutely loving this. And uh, the viewership that they've talked about, they've talked about Disney Plus uh, has talked about Visions being highly successful, which is why they did it again. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe it is a thing that I'm just not really getting. So Yeah. Hey, different strokes for different folks. And, and literally, like the strokes we're going to talk about, painting strokes. Within the first episode tonight, uh, but before we get there, Wes, uh, what about you? Is this one for you similarly that kind of comes and goes? Is this something that you were really looking forward to when we hit season two? Um, so with season one, um, I thought it was great to see different creators and giving them a platform as big as Disney Plus is huge, especially for people who aren't um, who don't get that kind of uh, exposure or notoriety or something so that's that's sure. awesome um but in a star wars aspect i mean i can take it or leave it the stories are the stories are good um i do like some of the animation and some of the different depictions of how they show sith and jedi so that was neat um but um as far as yeah as far as i'm kind of along the same lines with Corey. um it lukewarm on it but um i do i did like ronin a lot the ronin part would I yeah, the, I mean that was the first one, the first one that showed. Yeah, so that one was fantastic. I mean, just the whole um, samurai background because that's basically what George was trying to depict for his Jedi were kind of like a samurai sort of background. Um, so, um, but with season two, um, it's different now. So now that's it's like I was more excited about having some of these stories being told from all around the world, whereas in season one, I think it was primarily. Um, like uh, Asia and Japan and kind of type of uh, storytelling. Totally. Yeah. I, I'm for season one. I'm, I'm kind of a uh, amalgamation of all our thoughts, right? I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, more, most specifically Ronin. Yes. The first one. And then village bride, like Tim said, is, is I think one of the best crafted, just star Wars esque stories we've seen. I think as far as beginning middle and end character work, all that stuff. And then the ninth Jedi, um, the one with all the, like the, the blades that would re- reveal if you're a Sith or not. I thought that was incredible. And I'm like, these are great stories. Now I am not a huge rewatcher. I think I've, I've said this a couple of times. I don't really reread books. I don't really rewatch a lot of shows. Frankly, there's too much to see and do. Uh, so I, I just, I just, I, I like it. So I don't necessarily knock that. Cause I haven't really rewatched That's visions. Fair. That's um, fair. but I, I haven't, haven't. I mean, now that you mentioned, it, I haven't watched Andor again or Kenobi. Yeah, no. Like that, <laughs> I mean, you know? There's a lot of stuff to do, you know, and and yeah. we're, we're all gonna die before we get to all of it. So will all of you, everyone. <laughs> That's good. But beyond that, uh, beyond our own mortality, I really, <laughs> I was excited for season two of Visions. Uh, more is is, a, is an artistic concept, um, because of the fact that it got more global, like you said, Wes. I love the idea that a lot of people around the world got to say, hey, if I were to take this mythology, what would I have done as like a thought exercise? And mm-hmm. I think the fact that all the four stories, especially we're going to talk about tonight, because similarly to Corey, I have not watched past this because I want to kind of keep it fresh for us. I like that they were all a full idea and concept. Here's what okay. we got. Awesome. Let's go to the next one. Here's what they didn't awesome. push the boundaries go. nearly as much mm-hmm. as season yeah. one did, I think. No, yeah, so season one was kind of like, how would I make this a continual thing? And I feel like season two is like, here's my idea. I'm going to put it all out there. And it's been fun to watch that in, in, um, compar- in, I guess, comparison to season one. And I think overall, just the artistic quality, if we're like, we're not going to rate this because we don't do that anymore. Sorry, commenters. Um, but if, if we're doing like mm-hmm. just based on the pure artistry and um, ability that it showed, I think season two each one of them is a little more crisp, is a little more fully conceived and completed. Um, so let's, let's jump right in. Let's, let's j- start with episode one of season two, just called Sith. This was from El Giri Studio in Spain. And for those of you that may have watched it a little while ago, here's a little refresher on what happened. Uh, Lola, our main character and an aspiring artist, resides on a mysterious planet outpost with her droid, 
another great droid, and a beautiful painted landscape. However, once a malicious Sith arrives, her dark past catches up with her and threatens to overtake the beauty that she has created. This one has a lot of combat. This one has a lot of really fascinating artistic um, strokes as the whole episode is kind of painted. All the action is kind of painted in a way we've never really seen. Um, so what did you think about just the pure aesthetic of this episode? This was also featured a lot in the trailers. I feel like they really pushed this one really hard. It was good. I was impressed with uh, the aesthetic. It was hard to get used to, I would say. Mm -hmm. like, uh, it took, it mm -hmm. took a good, I don't know. I think it was like more than halfway through before I was like, all right, I think I know what to look at. You know what I mean? Like it, mm -hmm. it has that sort of effect that you don't really know what to look at on the TV, especially if you're watching on a big TV because like, some of it is very white in the beginning, especially, and then some of it is very colorful. Like, what are you mm -hmm. kind of? It took me a little while to get used to that, but um, yeah, I, I thought it was cool. The the artistic was or the the painting kind of. I don't know what the style is. It looked like it had been painted with a paintbrush, almost like pastel kind <coughs> of paint, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like a what's that game Okami back in the day where you were the wolf and you had to like draw the stuff in the game to like make stuff happen, like. It's that mixed with like a little bit of like Kingdom Hearts. Like it, there's just so many weird. It felt very video gamey to me in that way of like mm -hmm. we're gonna 3D animate a 2D concept and you're gonna use the art almost as a mechanic. Yeah. And I'm like, that's that. fascinating. Like, how do you think of that? Totally, <laughs> totally right. like totally reminded me of like just etching and drawing for the first time, like getting your mm -hmm. concept out. They did mm -hmm. a really they did a really good job of trying to keep that as a as a constant throughout. And I've, and just the dichotomy of the the black paint just like mm -hmm. like just reaching out all, all through all the colors mm -hmm. i was just okay i, I understand what's cool. going on now it's super cool yeah mm -hmm. no gray jedi in this one they're like <laughs> listen there is black there is color and color i know that is that it cool. and she, she had the little floating little orbs of paint or yeah. color, whatever the hell that was was pretty yeah so so I watch the, I highly recommend if you go to the behind the scenes uh, stuff, they do like mm -hmm. a, a short uh, on each episode. Right. With the I forgot director. about those. Yeah. Uh, like director introspectives or whatever. So the little floating paint ball looking things, uh, they showed how they did that. And I was absolutely blown away. Remember how in Rogue One, when the, the mountain explodes and yeah. like, like, you know, like the process of how, how they filmed that. So it was a like fish a fish tank, tank and they like dropped reversed firecrackers in a fish okay, tank. So, <laughs> oh, and, and Solo. That was in Solo. Essentially, Solo. Or yeah. Solo. Solo, my bad. Yes. Solo. Yes. yes. Okay. Essentially, essentially the same thing, but they had a fish tank pretty much. And then they just dropped paint in, into the, the tub. That's and that's cool. how it like, like it kind of forms cool. and falls and floats and all these different colors. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's the first time that this wow. particular style has ever been done before. Yeah, and the people wow. that made this, this was their first project as a collective. Um, this was the first what? studio, uh, like their, their first project as a studio. They've so, never uh, made the a thing? Is, is, like, is like world renowned, apparently. He's a really big deal. And, and the artists have done different projects together. But this was the first time they've ever been like, all on board on the same thing this was like their their number one and i was like this is insane because it's it's my favorite mm -hmm. one what? of the eight or nine or however many we yeah have. wow but it's dope how'd they get the job exactly well, uh, <laughs> yeah how does that work I, how does that, it, that's I mean, what i want to know based primarily based primarily on the director i think because mm -hmm. he's he's just a baller yeah i yeah I, that's so that that reminds me because I, I I meant to I was meant to watch those because like, people were talking about them I think in our Discord a lot and I meant to go back and I just haven't yet um. I think that speaks to also what I've been liking about season two is that the concept and, and ideas of it as a project, I almost find equally or more fascinating than the projects themselves. Right. Cause I'm just amazed yeah. by how these work. Cause I, I think that um, the fight choreography as well, I think was the most artistic that we've seen, like the amount of sparks that would fly off and kind right. of fly all over the paint and, and kind of affect the world. I think this is similarly for the four we've seen. Cause again, Tim, I haven't, I haven't watched all of them like you have, I think this was the most visually impressive and enticing thing that I saw because I, yeah. I thought it was just plainly just the most gorgeous to watch. And now knowing how much work they put into it in those like painting and using the water and things like that to create it, it all makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is easily yeah, my phenomenal. favorite so far as well, mostly because of how sinister the, the Sith look, especially the last yeah. guy. I don't know that he's oh, yeah, totally name. not Darth Malgus. You mean, come on. Really? Not me! Or Malik? Where did they pull that yeah. inspiration from? <laughs> yeah. Gee, I don't know. Yeah. Totally I, I random really Sith Lord. The, um, I don't know. Yeah. I really like when the robot or the droid shot that 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 
robot's head off. Yeah. Was funny. That was great. A little, yeah. A little he face cannon great. that he had he and just timing. blew his yeah. guy. This guy's 100% yeah. Malgus. 100%. <laughs> it's totally Malgus. Like, yeah. He looks like, um, uh, oh man, Malik, uh, Revan and Malik. Malik mm-hmm. has mm-hmm. a has yes. a tattoo on his head. I he's think. A bald, yep. Yeah. He's bald head though. This, so I don't yeah. know, bald guys it, with a, masks. Good, I guess it tracks. It's a really good look at the lighting too that they used. Mm-hmm. Like they they really played on the lightsaber is is the lighting. So mm-hmm. like you see yeah. the red cast in the shadow like back there in the back. Like his face is fully lit by it, and there's like nothing else. It's really yeah. dope. Um, but yeah. one of my favorite things about this is towards the end, whenever she's like, oh, it's like the darkness wants to be a part of the painting. Um, maybe I should just let it be a part of me. Mm-hmm. It very much reminded me of uh, Yoda facing his dark self in Clone Wars season six. That, oh, like, yes, kind of absolutely. Part of his arc. And the uh, the line from Kevin Scott in uh, Dooku Jedi Lost, where the, mm-hmm. there's that like, a mantra or something the Jedi used to use. And it's like, I walk in the light, but I acknowledge the dark and I find balance within. And I was like, mm-hmm. I love this like philosophical kind of cool. deep dive into it. Like yeah. it's, I don't know, it's excellent. Death kiss. Yeah. I really, I, that, uh, I love that stuff. I will also say when they, when the blades clash and then like, there was some camera motion where they would zoom in and the background would just go white and, and shift and all these yeah, kind of things. Cool. <laughs> in, in in honor of the week we're in right now for other movie releases, it reminded me a lot of Spider-Verse, of like of Into the Spider-Verse, oh, the yeah. way when, when the combat would happen there, they'd really play with a lot. And even the dots that would happen mm-hmm. in the Spider-Verse machine were kind of like the dots of paint. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, this kind of animation, yeah. just keep making this. This is all I want. It's fun. It's true. Yeah. Very strong start, and, and I think in reminiscence to season one, uh, with Ronan being such a strong start, I like I like these choices to kind of welcome us into the season. Um, I have no idea what this book would have been if they would have written a book about this yeah, to talk know. about the paint in a book. Like yeah. the concept itself actually is pretty interesting. We don't really mention that yet. The story, yeah, that, that they tell is like a like a someone who has left the Sith is a pretty cool concept. Mm-hmm. Like that's something you don't really see. We typically typically see the. Mm-hmm. You know, you Jedi fall to the dark side, right? You don't, right. you don't like, you don't, you don't fall from the dark side. You yeah, know what I mean, right. Like, so I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, Corey, wasn't there, a wasn't there story. one Jedi that that uh, that left the Sith and became a Jedi not again? Can, not that I can. Oh, uh, I can't. I can't remember. Although they couldn't remember either. So I guess that's. Uh... <laughs> there were Revan started as a Jedi though, so he started as that's a Jedi true. and then went Sith and then became Jedi again. So yeah, like and all only Valid because point. they. Racist memory. But, snip, snap, you know, snip, snap, snip, snap, snap. I know, I know, exactly. <laughs> I, but the the idea of a of a Sith choosing to walk away from the Sith mm-hmm. is is pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that could really work in a in a story. I think. Yeah. So. Nothing but her motorcycle and her droid and a bunch of paint. Yeah. There were yeah. A, a couple like attentions to detail that they'd put in this uh, just fifteen minute uh, short, where mm-hmm. she put on her jacket. Put one arm through her jacket and the other arm, and instead of just like grabbing the handle, she had taken her hair and moved it out of the jacket mm-hmm. and put it behind Solid. her. And I was yeah, like, was "Why? Cool. Did, like that was like a lot of detail they put in there for some reason. I think mm-hmm. to show us that um, you can add that attention to detail and then not like ruin the story at all because it was like quick. Yeah. But also when she was trying to get into or she was trying to get into to fix her speeder, like mm-hmm. her um, lightsaber was getting in the way. So yep. she moved her lightsaber aside, fixed it, and then moved back out. Didn't have to put that in there. Yep. But doing those little things, I think, like, brings a lot more to this animation studio, seeing how, how well they can put that on. I mean, what else can they do? So I thought that was really yeah. neat. I always love that in, in, in video games. Like, when you're if you go swimming and you get out and the character, like, brushes themselves off and stuff, and it's yeah, like, yeah. ah, that, that took days yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. of, of someone's job just being like, really? That? Then she moves her hair. Could her hair be outside the jacket? No. Okay. <laughs> I have it written right here. Moves outside <laughs> of the jacket. Oh, I just I, I have kinda a, edited um, that myself. I have a, fr- I have a friend of a friend that works for 343 uh, that was working on the Halo games. Ooh, Their nice. only job at uh, working on the Halo games is, is painting rocks. That's what they say they do. They're, they're a rock painter. They exclusively paint the different shades of wow. rocks in the game and make them look realistic, and that's all they do. So, you know. Someone's job. That's cool. Someone's job. That's right. You know, those credits looking? go by fast at the end of these, but everyone does something. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. incredible we start. We also haven't mentioned the 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 double lightsaber was pretty. pretty yes, yeah, was, that, that was moment a storytelling device. Um, mm. Like, 
that she's both light and dark, I guess. Yeah. Is what, Did she only bleed there? one crystal? Was it a second crystal that was... Shut up. It was really cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, was... it was really cool. It was really cool. And the yeah. Sith's, uh, the, the main Sith guy's lightsaber, like, still being a cross hilt, but not mm-hmm. being the Kylo Ren cross hilt yep, was yep. pretty dang cool. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, look. It looks like the Master Sword. Look at You see how it yeah. flares oh, at the bottom? God, it looks, it like, totally the, it looks like the Master I've been playing a lot of Zelda, so it's on my Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> it does look just like the Master Sword. Like, it's got that flare at the bottom that... Yeah. It's and it's cool. also fun like that it. she's, Hers... like... Go ahead, Tim. Oh, I was going to say, hers also is, like, a rapier. Um, so yeah. it's tied mm-hmm. back to the, the whole Spanish yep. designs. It's mm-hmm. got that. Um, and then, you know, the red and the yellow, obvious obvious Spain references, too, yeah. which is really cool. Well, and, and, and I love the fact that she starts yellow, because usually you see them be dark, and then they, they, go to, they go to the light, so the second blade would have been, like, blue or green, but it's yellow, and then the second blade is red. So it's acknowledging the dark, but that's but it's not a it's not her falling to the dark, and I think that's also mm-hmm. a nice switch because we always see color color theory in Star Wars, right? You always go from red to a different primary, but her right. bringing that out and then the yellow still existing, one aesthetically just gorgeous, but is a really yeah. nice metaphorical thing. And then of course ending with the Sith being destroyed and being like, awesome, good, yes, this is yeah. what I wanted, and then it's like, is oh she- no. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's that's the there are multiple both this one and the next episode or yeah, the next episode both end on a kind of not really <laughs> sure what to think a little bit, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. I like that they do that with these stories. Like and and I think that's that's the cool thing about this that that I think is both good and bad for visions and why it kind of it's a fun project, but it also I'm just kind of mad about it is like I feel like these little shorts have a lot of potential but yep. we don't really do anything with them <laughs> nor are we probably ever going to do anything with them i guess we could tell more more visions i suppose they could but let's be real you know they're not going to spin one of these into a tv show the way that they are no bad no bad batch or you know i would be shocked if that ever happened so I it's mean, good that they I don't, give I don't them know. 15 minutes 15 minutes is a good yeah sit down yeah. Knock it out, and then you can say whether you like it or not. I mean, you can just move on to the next one. But yeah. if they were, yeah. you know, 30, 45 minutes, you might lose some people. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, I think you so. know, it's, it's, it's like a buffet. Like, you kick a little bit, and mm-hmm. even if the brisket is out the next time you go up, it's like, well, I really like that, but I maybe didn't need more rib or whatever. It, meats. <laughs> right, Wes? Yeah, you get it. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to say the first episode was brisket. <laughs> And the yeah, next episode like that. is pork loin. Ooh. So the pork <laughs> loin, I like that. Uh, so this Both second good. episode. <laughs> uh, so Corey mentioned this one has a very kind of similar thematic ending. A lot of folks I saw right when Visions Drop called this kind of the darkest episode, this thematically. It's called <laughs> Screecher's Reach. Um, done by Cartoon Saloon, who's an Irish company. Uh, they made the film Wolf Walker which was an, on Apple TV, I think it was last year. It got Academy Award nominated. I missed it, but a lot of folks adored it. Very hand-drawn kind of classic 2D animation style. Um, yeah. And this one, if you don't remember, goes like this. Um, it has a group of kids uh, set out to the mysterious Screecher's Reach to discover the truth of a fearsome myth. The kids run into a terrifying witch who turns out to be an ancient Sith, and upon destruction of that beast, a gargantuan ship appears. The kids tremble as a beautiful yet fearsome woman descends who turns out to be the Sith Master. By defeating that beast, the youngest Stargazer has unwillingly become an apprentice and then leaves her home forever. And then it's over. So, (laughs) like, this was us unwillingly watching a Sith initiation trial. I know. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that they put it back to back with the first episode because it continues this sort of theme of, of, like, blurring the lines of good and evil. I love that. I love it when that happens. Some of my favorite stories in Star Wars are about the villains because they, they always blur the lines between... Good and evil, Tarkin mm-hmm. and uh, Bane and Plagueis. Mm-hmm. It's all like you're rooting for them. Like when you yeah. read them from their perspective, you root for the bad guy because, you know, it's, it's like you can kind of see the perspective. So to see the the Sith in this story be essentially offering a chance of offering hope is really what the Sith is all Yeah, like you can travel, yeah. you can mm-hmm. uh, yeah. see the stars. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting angle. It's a very clever and creative and interesting angle. Um, 
What sure. what was the not, setting? Not the direction I expect. Was the setting were they like orphans? Were they like in a in a home? Oh, no. Like just a pe- like it's like a village of it, young it kids, pretty much. Lo- like slave labor yeah. or something like okay. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I felt like that. Yeah, it yeah like, like a hard uh, life. It felt like the that planet that we saw in Bad Batch with uh, uh, with like all the kids were working for that one guy and. Oh that, that yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. The season where they were all working for that guy in the mines and. Yep. You know, and he was taking the biggest cut and oh, okay, right. him and shit. Remember that episode? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it it, it kind of had that vibe a little bit. Um, it was a great opening. The fact that the credits like open with like the silhouette, it looks like yeah. uh, Among Us a little bit. It's beautiful. Little yeah. On. <laughs> um, and they were turning. I mean, just the storytelling was really, really good. Like he's like turning the, I don't know, the big wheel thing, and then like that one guy, he like gives up. You can tell he's frustrated, but all you see is a silhouette of him, really. Like you don't really yeah. see anything else. It was, yeah, it's giving me a little bit clever. of a prologue. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And, and I like this too because when we finally do see this this monster, um, it, it reminded me a lot of the George Mann missing fables, dark legends kind of stuff where the yeah. deep Sith, mm-hmm. we know as readers it's a Sith, but the kids and everyone sees it as like this just fearsome teeth in black. And like, because oh, right. we never really see the Sith in, in complete uh, clarity in this episode until it the blade comes out like we see on the screen here it's scratchy it kind of illuminates it but it's still just dark and horror is it a hallucination is it not we don't know as the kids don't know and this is the one that got kind of really it didn't scare me but it tapped into like the primal childhood fear of what's in the dark oh my god it is real is it gonna kill me and then you defeat it which should be this heroic tale of victory and it's like oh no this kid might now then become that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> the kid murdered yeah. that woman. That was pretty yeah. brutal, dude. Like the the animation style itself did not it it didn't prepare me for the scream that this yeah. Sith yes. gave out. It was Oh yeah. I, it was I, I was like there's was like this is going to be kind of like kid friendly, right? No. I mean, that was like no. that was a pretty like I could not fearful know scream. Any louder. <laughs> yeah. That they put in there. Yeah. So I, was, I mean, kudos to the studio for that to really throw us off. No, the the whole time, as soon as the screeching starts, like nope, 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 nope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is a this is this, like, is, this is maybe this is, not this is maybe the first this is maybe the first Star Wars content, Star Wars branded content that I would maybe have a little bit of hesitation to showing like a little kid to. You know what mm. I mean? Like, yeah. Which is a little dark actually this because I think a lot of parents are probably putting on visions for kids and stuff. But I have yeah. a. I have a, I have six and eight year old nephews, and I'm like, I don't know that the six year old can handle this. The eight year old probably could, yeah. but the six year old might get really scared, like watching this. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm like, dang, that's pretty, that's pretty brutal. I don't think it's happened before. And yeah, I was still under the impression to grasp. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was still under the grasp the ending. They leave you like, like completely emotionally distraught. Uh, yeah, like, what happened? To oh the my bad god, guy? this is so. Freaking sad. This kid I know. just gave like, up dude, everything. This, this lady is obviously this is the evil, antithesis. Right? Yeah, it's the antithesis of the devil you know is better than the one you don't. Like, yep. I, stay working, kids. It's fine. You'll, you'll yep. be okay. No. Feels very Irish. It makes Keep sense. It's an Irish studio. I'm like, this is, it ends up like, well, then sometimes life is really bad. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Sorry. This is like Sorry, a, kids. a cross between the father and the sister. Right here from the Mortis trilogy, like that's yeah. what it kind of oh looked sure me. yeah 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 I know I the imagery was really fantastic I love the way they did it because uh like it looks like an angel like coming down from the yeah. heavens and the sharp angles of the ship but that was contrasted with the music was very evil right yes and, uh, then she comes out with all the red she has very red red is always evil right and like mm-hmm. she's the bright red lipstick and the red accents like. Like we know that uh, we know that it's evil, but um, I don't think anybody else does. And yeah. there's a, a lot of mixed emotions amongst the kids too, right? They're like, "You're gonna go with her? Are you sure?" And but they sort of tell her to go, right? The oldest yeah. kid tells her to go. Yeah, like, it's what we wanted, I think. Dang. And she grabs that lightsaber, and and it, this kind of did remind me of that like seven and a half foot tall mommy from Resident Evil Four or, or Resident Evil Seven Eight. What what's the one village? Remember that one with the with the giant hat that the internet was thirsting over for all the time that from Resident Evil? Am I alone in this? I don't remember. <laughs> yep. All right, cool guys. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, no, I, I thought that she was. If we uh, are gonna go, if we are gonna go with old school zombie video games, the Left 4 Dead games had. Uh, yes. Uh, had the witches 
that would show up occasionally that were so scary. Oh you know, my god, those? no. Remember yeah, when... Left for Dead games? Ah! Yeah. Yes. Well, Left for Dead was was really it was a fun it was, it was about the same time as like uh Call of Duty Zombies was big. Yep. Left for Dead was kind of big in that era too and phenomenal co-op game. And uh you just have to survive basically and um Yeah. Yeah, brutal. Brutal. Yeah. This really was kind of scary. This was to be a happy Monday night. Not a yeah, what? What? We'll go traumatizing Monday night. Still might be. Luckily, the the latter half of those we're going to talk about today are a little more uplifting. Um, so episode three, uh, in the stars. This one was done by Punk Robot, which is a a studio out of Chile, and they uh, this is very more of a classic kind of Star Wars tale, uh, and it went like this. Uh, the two remaining survivors of an alien race that has been decimated by the Empire. We actually see the Empire in this one. Attempt to fight back in honor of their fallen family. Koten, the older sister, is more focused on her pure survival, while Tachina, the younger, wants to fight the bad guys, and she even tries to use the Force over and over and over. When the two attack an Imperial garrison with all the odds stacked against them, the Force appears in a mysterious way as they use the power of the planet against the Empire once and for all, honoring their mother, who they believe is in the stars. So this one... Huge total shift. Like we said, the first two kind of have that. You're going to be a Sith. Or, or is darkness ap- appropriate? It goes with there. This, guys, I felt like this was a classic Star Wars tale. It's an indigenous population against the Empire. We see stormtroopers. We have people knowing, calling it the Force. Like, it, it is very much more like, Corey, what you were saying you kind of missed. This, this felt like it could have been in Star Wars on a planet we just haven't seen yeah. yet. To yeah. me, you know yeah, what I mean? This one, this one fit in really nicely, actually. It did because they had the they had the actual imagery of what stormtroopers were. What mm-hmm. specific stormtroopers were those again? Uh, the one with the shrouds. Like snow, they had like, like shrouds over. Oh, snow troopers. Yes. Yeah, snow yeah, troopers? yeah, yeah. They look like yeah. snow troopers. Yep. Yeah. Which is interesting yeah. because snow troopers only are in the snow, so they're not in the snow as far as you know. So that was interesting. <laughs> Maybe there's they had to reuse the different helmets because they were you know. They weren't producing as much ore or whatever the hell they're pulling yeah. off of that planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it really impressive. felt like. A, Sorry, go ahead. I was, I was saying it felt like a, an Andor in that respect. Like mm-hmm. um, over on, uh, um, oh my God, what's what's the planet where they had uh, all the stars and the indigenous population that was watching while they were doing the heist when they stole yeah. the garrison? Yeah. You know what I'm talking uh, about? The eye from yeah. Narkina yeah. Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's the next one. Yeah, I, I, thought I thought I was about. right. There's a lot of planets in Andor. I can't remember the name of that There one. are. But this felt like that because we, you know, we saw these people kind of being beaten down by the Empire and then using that kind of tradition against them. Uh, but, Corey, yeah, I, so I cut you off, but you're saying this was one of the most impressive ones I was just going to say this was the best animation, I thought, of the ones that we saw. Like, Incredible, just yeah. The, kind of richest. The fact that this was a one-off thing is, is pretty impressive considering it took Clone Wars. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like five seasons to look good. Um, pretty yeah. good uh, that this was uh, as impressive as it was. Yeah, and, and it's also this... stop motion too, which is wild. Yeah, it looked a little like, stop motion, like which was stop wild. Motion. Yeah, that whole raid on the facility was insanely good looking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I, and I love the kind of just messaging of it too. Of like, it starts out in a very dark place. Of there's only two left, and you know everyone else has died. They are That's in the stars. Nuts. They are decimated. They are not going to rebuild their people necessarily. This is yeah. just to survive. And I think putting that kind of level of devastation with two pretty young sisters starts us off in a really hard place. But I but I appreciated even within their limited time frame, they're able to, to take this and really end it in a hopeful way of showing just using the planet very, very much like a, like the Ents at Isengard, right? Where they release the river and they're destroying the Imperials. <laughs> So I love that kind of look at it. And like you said, Tim, with it being stop motion, with all the liquid effects and everything like that, knowing how much time that takes uh, really, again, from a craft standpoint, I was just watching this being like, wow, I cannot imagine starting work on this, much less completing it. And I think this was the most kind of fully formed Star Wars classic story, even though there's no lightsabers, it still got some force in there as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's not pretend that uh, the little sister was not that most annoying little shit. Ever. Oh my god, I was oh so god. mad at her the whole time. I was I like, mean, "Listen, right. <laughs> she almost got him killed like so four times." <laughs> She's like, "We're gonna so get annoying. out of here, and then we're gonna go drink our water and just follow me." She's like, "No, I have a better idea." She's like, "Are you serious?" I mean, she did, yeah. but she did have a better idea. So we'll say that. But, and it worked. <laughs> and it worked, but, but, but only because only ninety-nine because times out of hundred, <laughs> actually 
did have the force. Ultra confident. Yes. Yeah. What was going to happen if, <laughs> if she didn't have it in that moment? They're dead. They're literally dead. Oh, yeah. 100%. Those, and she, those, those, those her, stormtroopers are like easiest day ever. Yeah, Two kids. You ever seen, done. you ever seen like, you ever seen what happens with Play Doh when you drop it from a really high height? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like the older, the older sister did trust. The, the little sister to actually do all of those acrobatic moves to get up the like that's the chain. True. That's true. She's like, yeah, come with me. And they're jumping and they're hanging on stuff. Like, come no. on. They, one of them would slip and fall to their death. No. Why can't somebody make a, a show like that to where like Play the ending just Play screws dude. up and you're Play just like, oh no, they died. <laughs> that's the end of the show. But exactly what there's happened. gotta be an ending. I mean, there doesn't have to be an ending. Stuff like this yeah. happens all the time. No, not at no. all. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, that was um, that was uh, that was funny. I do like the imagery a lot. The Empire, and I, I, mm-hmm. I will say, you know, it's funny. I started the, my complaint about visions with it not being very, like, true to Star Wars in a lot of ways. But this, the first four episodes of this, really were, I think, like they fit very pretty nicely within the confines of the rules in Star Wars. So yeah. Um, yeah, you know, this was a very tried and true empire story, like real empire. Like it's it's genuinely imperial troops and imperial yes. officer and a very yes. plausible story that fits nicely in Star Wars. So yeah, they gave us know. a great summary in the beginning, just like with the painting that she put on the wall mm-hmm. about how yeah. the yeah, 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 empire yeah. got there and how the world has turned to shit because they get yeah, you know the fifteen great. seconds of sunlight that actually shows you that life can exist on this planet, and then it just gets mm-hmm. covered up with smoke. So it, it was, yeah. I liked how they showed us this in the very beginning and then it, it proceeded to how do we, like, how do we fix this? Yeah, I, I like this too because it kind of, it did harken back to, you know, we mentioned Clone Wars earlier uh, for animation, but I do think this had a very Clone Wars feel, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And then the Jedi came and saved them. It's like, no, then, then the people saved themselves. You know what I mean? And, and I kind of like that. I'm like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is what Nemec's talking about in Andor. Of like, these are the little revolutions around the galaxy. That are happening it's regular people that are rising up in little pockets of rebellion and things like that against the actual empire so i like that they chose to use the empire in this as opposed to sith troopers or whatever what have you yeah. i think it was really appropriate mm-hmm. to use the the really recognizable fascist government i like yeah. that a lot agreed agreed yeah yeah and then we go to the oddest one uh, but a, a real throwback one for, for some fans of other animation here. Uh, I Am Your Mother, uh, which I do believe was the episode that was screened at Celebration London uh, for folks. This was done by Ardman Animation uh, out of the United Kingdom. Very famously, the creators of Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep. Uh, for folks that have watched them, I, I was obsessed with Wallace and Gromit as a kid. Uh, so a huge win for me. Uh, and this one... The plot summary, if you want to call it that. Uh, it was It's race day, everybody. Uh, a young Twi'lek balances her desire to race with the love and embarrassment that she receives from her mother. Uh, the trademark art and animation follows the two of them as they fly the family ship through the mother and daughter family race and learn about the power of familial love above all. There is no force. There is no empire. There is just fun. And there is Wedge Antilles. Um, so- <laughs> ah, freaking I wedge. love Wedge Antilles in this. I love that he's a sellout. Yeah, I love yeah, that he says, us. "Make sure to make sure to Perfect. visit the Wedge and Tilly merchandise yeah. store." That was hilarious. And it's actually <laughs> Dennis Lawson. It's at the only thing he's come back for since Rise, Rise of Skywalker. Wow, in this. is that real? It's, it's actually, actually Dennis actually, Lawson. Yes, Holy it's shit! Yes. That's hilarious, dude. It's, yeah, it's like exactly what Wedge slash Dennis Lawson would do. Like to get to get his extra yeah. money there on the, some of the like couple the bucks projects. That's funny. Yeah, hey, here's I, a um, here's a hot take. This was my favorite of the four stories oh my god yes <laughs> i loved awesome. this i thought it was so, so dumb i thought really it was so fun. dumb i loved it i really like the animation style mm-hmm. i think it's uh i think it's it's fun it's funny to see something so familiar i think mm-hmm. in star wars like this is mm-hmm. such a yeah such a like an obvious wallace and gromit is so identifiable right like yeah is, yeah and this is literally that, except Star Wars characters. It's a Twi'lek, and she's in a Rebel pilot costume. Like it's funny. <laughs> like I just, I think it's hilarious. Like yeah. And it started off good too, with her kind of dreaming about and watching the little advertisement. And then I love that she took her headphones off, and her mom's like listening to like heavy metal, and she's like yeah. working on stuff. And her, that was fun, man. <laughs> I loved it. And they also had the cameo of uh, the robot from 
Uh, I, I I just googled it because I forgot its name. It's called Cooker from a Green a Grand Day Out. It was just a Wallace and Gromit skit where they went to the moon and they had a robot with them. And that robot is in the background of of one of the nice. shots, actually in the episode. So Wallace that. and Gromit fans That's got great. him. And and uh, Dale in the chat pointed out something great. Uh, there was a bra in in the episode that was fun, which was a play on George Lucas famously telling Kerry Washington that there were no bras in space. Ah, that's funny. Oh, oh yeah, I was like, that's why are they? Why is there a bra? It's just that was funny. that was weirdly out of like place. That. I also know that that was out of place. Too. That's <laughs> yeah. funny. That's a good throwback. But Whereas had... this picture that you have on screen too of the shot inside, like she has. A uh, Max Rebo, Max Rebo more than one on the wall. Yeah, right there. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's oh, pretty funny. Good. Is that does he have the he's actual big. butt? <laughs> Max Rebutt? I'm not sure. You have to pick it up and look at it. Probably. Oh my god, did I say Carrie Washington on you 79? Did. I think is Carrie it Carrie Fisher? Who is Carrie Washington? I don't even know. <laughs> Did you listen to Hamilton recently? I've been up for 24 hours. <laughs> Carrie Fisher. I'm my sorry, goodness. Eric, my Washington. goodness. That's hilarious. Thanks. Thank you, Steph. No, I'm going to own that. <laughs> you, didn't, you, didn't listen to, you didn't listen to Hamilton recently, you were saying. I so did. Maybe that's yeah, we, uh, during our oh, road trip. Uh, every time we're doing a road trip, it, it, it's super long. When we hit two hours and 45 minutes left in the trip, we put on Hamilton and it's in its entirety because you can listen to the entire thing. <laughs> Highly good. recommend. They show, um, uh, they show, they give you little details here at StarWars.com. Um, so it's a Max Rebo plush poster of what looks like Harrison Dula, uh, a welding mask that's reminiscent of Mando's Beskar helmet. Where is that at? Oh, she has it on. She holds oh, it up oh, on she, her yeah, face. Yeah. The mom like, does. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. yep. Okay, okay. Mm. In the first few scenes, you get a sense of depth for. Okay, I got you. So yeah, yeah. Nice, nice yeah. little yeah. throwbacks here. Yeah, yeah and it, it. it really is just like showing the. The comedy of Star Wars, when it's it's all so intentional, it doesn't take away from anything. It's not trying to like be overly serious or comment. It's like you know what? What's really fun? Ships and and her and her mother's relationship, I think, is the actually very parents. genuine and sweet. Yeah. yeah, she's just trying to funny. love her kid. I know. Yeah, it was good. It was wholesome and playful. And I don't know. This one has a this one had a lot of uh, rewatch value for kids. I feel like you put this yeah, on for sure. Yeah. This yeah, one, this one's it, a fun one. We're like, um, I went over to my buddy's house and his kid's like, I don't know, he was like, I don't know, one, maybe less than one. And he puts the same thing on over and over and over and over again. And yep, he keeps replaying yep. and replaying. So this would be great to replay over and over and over again because you could like, A, get him into Star Wars real quick. And then B, it's, it's yeah. a good story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think in, in similar, you know, in similar veins to the earlier ones, we're we're saying that you know, vi while visions may not be the okay, I need this to count with Star Wars and do all this stuff. This is definitely one where you can be like, my gosh, they they worked really hard on this animation. Like I I think because we've yeah, seen good. Wallace and Gromit and things like that, we're like, oh, this is how it happens. Like this is so technical and hard, but you know exactly what every character was. A lot of classic aliens too in this one. Like a lot yep, of very true. old school Star Wars mm -hmm. aliens. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the different shots, always fun to see races, right? I mean, come on, the pod race and everything like that. Harkening back to that, I think it was a lot of fun. And if you're just watching them in halves, kind of like we are, it was nice to do like, oh, my God, is the darkness inside of me? Will I ever escape my yeah. fate? Maybe all my family will die to be like, my mom's kind will of I, annoying. But Will I ever love again? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah, really but... just go here was was a nice way to. embarrassing. Yeah. No, yeah, we definitely. Nice around that out. Definitely cannot stop to stop talking about this one and this with the little Death Star that's on. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna bring Calphus's it up. Calphus's craft. Yes, yep. do it. That was, that was hilarious. <laughs> that was it. hilarious. There were lots of stupid little things like that. Yeah, yeah the little were... Death Star was hilarious. That was so funny. <laughs> Um, uh, I like the uh, I like the mean, droid's head, the Astromex droid being on like an accordion. That was mm -hmm. funny. Like when it, yeah, it broke, fun it little takes like that. Goofy. Yeah. You mentioned in this pre-show the the line uh, "get your porta potty off the starting off the starting line." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, "That's yeah. a okay. that's a giant porta must be a family size porta potty because they have those yeah. now. They have the big ones, nope. so that's what it looked yeah. like, I guess." I mean, I mean, it's I an RV. That. It's so great. Right? <laughs> yeah, the shit was yeah. fast though. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? That was. It could move, baby. <laughs> I like yeah, the fire animation too behind it when it was flying. They had this mm -hmm. blue and green kind of fire coming out of it. Yeah, it was fun. Um, funny little, funny little short. I think it. I think it tracks. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it would be fun to see a kids show. I think with this type of animation. I think this is yeah. the, this is a, of these four. This is the one that I think I could see being a real show. And maybe it's just because we have such such a familiar style of animation. Mm -hmm. Right. But, uh, it was fun. 
It was dumb and fun. And I love that Wedge and Tilly was in it. That was yeah. so <laughs> hilarious. What a choice. Yeah. And, and, it, and it makes me realize, you know, I, I think as opposed to season one where I, I, I really did try to binge them all and figure out how they all worked in tandem, these four, I think, especially now after just talking to them just briefly as we did, because I haven't talked about them with anybody yet. We haven't even talked offline about these episodes at all. I think these all work so well as just individual pieces of media and they can just yeah. be fun or they can just be devastating and that's it. There's so little, I guess, weight on them. And as folks who talk about Star yeah. Wars every single week and we have to think about huge planning and all these stories and how they mix. And, and I think that unfairly maligns some stories because they don't fit as well. These can just exist as what they are. They can be just craft. They can be just story. And that's fine, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that these yeah. four really are, are a smart way to order the beginning of season two to kind of give us that freedom to just enjoy them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder, sure. if they, I wonder if there really is anything else associated with these stories. Like, is there any kind of planning ulterior motive with this at all? Like, is it literally just, we're just going to pay these random studios to create this random project and never going to think about it ever again? Is that what it is, truly? I, like, they're all just I, I think that's not. where we are now. <laughs> I think, I think it's like an intro product. Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. it's a it's a worldwide kind of staple thing of hey, let's bring in some studios who also tend to like Star Wars, and mm -hmm. let's not put another you know white director behind the screen, mm -hmm. like or behind yeah. the camera, you know, doing something. Yeah. So, you know, put put it put it within your especially in some of the later episodes, they they dig much more into like cultural mindsets and shifts and and art yeah. direction and stuff, but um like yeah i think this is it's a good entry piece and also maybe a testing ground to see like does an episode like this take off in a way that goes yeah maybe this could be a series or maybe this could yeah. be you know put yeah. a couple episodes on youtube or something like and, and anthological storytelling is also interesting like we haven't seen it as much in star wars but like i mean you look at things like even black mirror which is this live action yeah, they're true. longer episodes but those have they're mm -hmm. one and then they're done um, and it's just like, yeah, that's the story we wanted to tell. And thematically we bring in different directors and do things like that. So maybe they're just kind of trying this thing. I can't imagine that it's a huge financial burden. You know, right. I think that probably helps that they can just kind of put it's this probably, out. Yeah. They put it a little bit. All right. Uh, once that, we'll, I think we'll know exactly when it stops working because we will stop getting seasons. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty, that's true. pretty blunt about that. Um, mm -hmm. RIP Willow no longer. On Disney Plus, as of yeah, what's uh, up with Friday. that, bro? That's insane. It's I can't gone. Can't believe that. Oh, it's man, that. gone. Why are um, they doing that? It's to save money for save royalties, money. right? Is that all it is? Royalty fees. Royalties, and uh, from my very basic understanding, there's something about it costs so much money to have so many projects on a service and to keep their like all the, like the contracts still suck, which is why the writers are striking for streaming, right? But they're still apparently good enough that you can. I think claim losses, and if you claim a loss, then that helps you with taxes. And but like, there's so many things it's about them. It's just crazy to me, man. As much as, I mean, they actually like Willow is like a key part of Star Wars. Honestly, yeah. it, was, it was a celebration. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, like, there's there's still a billboard. Oh, my alarm lamp's going off. I'm all over the place today, guys. And I, I see that. I said I last week one oh, with with Turner and Hooch. I mean, Tom Hanks. You can take Tom Hanks off the off the, the platform. Well, and was that old Turner and Hooch or is that the new reboot they tried to make of Turner and Hooch? Did you hear about know. that? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it would be the original series. It should be the original, right? Because they did the Mighty Ducks, too. The Mighty yeah. Ducks is out of there. Mm -hmm. What the hell, man? That's like how I got into stop hockey. Stop taking your things off. Stop taking your <laughs> stop taking the stuff off. Uh, Listen, anyways, uh, I am I, I'm, I'm, I'm not for now. usually I'm not usually one to promote the you know, the sailing of the seven seas, but if, if, <laughs> if digital service providers keep doing this crap where you can pay for something and then no longer be able to access it again, I got no problem with that. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Yep. Like, uh, like there's been, uh, there's been instances where Amazon will sell a digital version of a product and then take it off of their streaming mm -hmm. service. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you lose access. So, you know, I used to buy, I used to buy the, um, like the Star Wars digitally, like I think I still have like the Last Jedi or something on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like Amazon just decides that I can't watch that anymore, even though I yeah. paid for it on the Amazon stream. Oh yeah, form. they're not gonna. Host That's it why anymore, if, if I have so. something I really want, I've started like I don't do this with hardly anything, but like Star Wars movies or like Dune or like Spider Verse, like things I know mm -hmm. I love and I'm gonna want forever. I buy the Blu-ray that has the digital code, so I still might watch yeah, right. it streaming mostly, mm -hmm. but I will always have that physical disc. Um, but unfortunately, for things like Visions, Andor, 
Obi Wan, Clone Wars season seven. Yeah. None Mando. Yeah, none of that exists. Only products that they don't even sell. You know what I mean? None like, of it exists. Is there, there's no there's no physical. Nope. Um, I mean, there's there no is. physical copy of Willow. Is well, there? <laughs> I mean. Yeah, there's there pirated, is. but there's you no can legal. It. There's, there's no, no legal, legal soul. Arr, there is going to yeah. be buy, <laughs> You cannot buy Willow on DVD, right? It's not nope. possible. No, Willow's so gone now. There's no legal way to access Willow. This currently. project has just gone forever. Freaking after all that, man. I don't know that's gone mad, forever. Bro. I'm sure they bring it back. It's just, it makes you mad. Well, makes you mad. none no, of those three guys are making money on it right now. After they they trotted uh what's his name on stage over. Warwick Davis, yeah. Warwick Davis on stage. They had a panel in March. <laughs> about it that that makes me mad dude that makes me real mad uh, so here's what we'll say everybody <clears throat> watch visions now because who knows that's true <laughs> when take you, it you know who else I'm, I'm gonna go on this tangent you know who Do else it. hated it. this corporate bullshit Is freaking george, george lucas? lucas that's it's why george he lucas. kept the damn rights to everything is because corporate bullshit like this yep everything has yeah, a price and suck. uh you know what if someone's like hey Eric, what was the price? We're gonna take everything off of Disney Plus for a billion dollars. Four point one billion. I'd be like, all right, sorry, sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm taking the bill. <laughs> but here's your homework, everybody. As of now, May 29th, all of Visions That's is everything. still on Disney Plus. Uh, next week, we will be finishing up uh, with the last, I believe, five episodes of of, um, of Visions. Uh, they're a little shorter, so I think it's actually almost a similar running time. But we're gonna do the last five episodes. Uh, next week and two weeks from tonight which is june 12th is that right june 12th um that is when we're doing our path of vengeance round table uh usually we do it within one month after but because the audiobook has been delayed so much i believe it's finally coming out next week we wanted to give everyone an extra week to catch up if you're listening to audio thing things like that um but stay tuned for that uh watch what you can while you can um before we peace on out of here for these bits, uh, any last thoughts on uh, the future of piracy, on uh, the first four <laughs> episodes of Visions, uh, anything like that? Uh, if the Heat are going to win, uh, t- t- Tim, I'm going to start with you, man. Any final thoughts really about this, this, these first four episodes now that we've dug into them a little more deeply? Uh, just watch the behind the scenes. I think if if there's a, a particular if Absolutely there's whether you love the episodes or you hated them, good point. I think it's a really cool cool look into um, the thought process behind it. Like you'll probably catch things that you didn't catch before. It might give you a, a different lens on it. Yep. Um, and I've I've always loved behind the scenes Star Wars stuff. I mean, it's just so rich Top just tier. to see the process. So highly recommend. Absolutely. Yeah. Seeing the creative people do creative stuff. Yep. <clears throat> Corey, what about you, man? Too. Yeah, I mean, this is a fun project. Um, I think it has a place. I'm still kind of mad about it, just in general. I mean, it's <laughs> fine. Yeah. I think it's a little. I think it's a little telling that I haven't watched it until we were just going to talk about it on the show. Yeah. you know what I mean. Doesn't have uh, that immediacy. Yeah, it doesn't have that immediacy, and I don't know. We have so much Star Wars now. You know, like I think yep. I mentioned. I mentioned like a couple weeks back that, like, eventually, if the IP continues the way that it does, eventually theoretically a thousand years from now you know what i mean like mm-hmm. there is so much star wars content that if you decide to become a fan of the franchise you generally can't consume it all you know what no. i mean like yep yep you generally cannot because there's ten thousand books and four thousand hours of television you know what i mean like it would literally take physically too long <laughs> to do if it. you have a nine to five job it is physically <laughs> impossible to consume all the star wars like yeah theoretically, right. that could that could happen and there, there are some projects that already sort of feel like that to me uh, a little yeah. bit in the universe with so many books and so many comics and so many shows. And, you know, I think the first thing that's going to go is going to be stuff like shorter term animation, you know, like this. Yeah. So I think it's got a place. Um, I think uh, I think this is probably one of the first projects that I, I would say that I will watch one time and kind of just be done with it. And it was fun. It was sure. cool. We have one conversation about it. We're kind of done. It's kind of yep. in the same realm as the uh, the Jedi. What's the new uh, TV show? The kids show on. Oh, Young Jedi Adventures. Young Jedi uh, Adventures. Yeah, Young Jedi Adventures. Like I don't think I'm gonna watch that. You know what I mean? Like that's kind yeah. of, which is crazy. You know, I've watched everything up to this point, but yeah. I, I actually I actually really like the fact that I can say that I like that there is so much Star Wars now that they are really trying to appeal to different audiences with different types mm-hmm. of storytelling. I think that's a good idea, and I think it's fun. And I think it works, and you know, if people, yeah. you know, I don't want you to 
take this the wrong way. If people listening to me think that I'm saying this project sucks, don't watch it. Like what I'm saying is be happy that other projects exist and be okay with it. Just because it's not for you does not mean you have to shit on it. You know what I mean? Like exactly. It's something exactly. for somebody out there. Like maybe this is an intro to Star Wars for someone who's really into anime, right? Like this is how they finally mm-hmm. got on the got on the boat, you know. Point, so yeah. Hundred percent. Welcome, welcome these types of short-term projects, these fun projects, and who knows? Maybe we will see something come out of this one day. I don't yeah. know. Maybe so. I don't know. You guys if ever? We can predict that old, what uh, they were doing. Psh. I know, seriously, <laughs> they make bad and good decisions all the time. So, mm-hmm. you know, have you guys ever seen the old, uh, the old anime? Um, God, somebody did a. It's on YouTube. They did the like the Tie Fighter battle. Oh like, my God! Looks yes. Like, Looks like looks like anime, and it's like yep. It's got it's got like classic like anime like alternative rock music playing, and the Tie yep. Fighters and the X Wing pilots, and it zooms in on their faces and the helmets. Are yep. You know what I'm talking about? Like yep. I would love I remember to that. see mm-hmm. one of these things turn into a real project. So mm. I don't know. Maybe it will. I'd be okay with Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> it's <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> speaking That'd be the best. Of, yeah. So speaking of that, I think that some of these studios that we've seen before might catch on a little a little faster than some of the other ones. But I think also bringing out some of these characters, things like mashup characters kind of that we saw on the first one where it kind of looks like Malgus kind of looks like, um, like, uh, Revan and like all in one, something like that would help. Just, you need some kind of, you need some kind of solid foundation to go off of instead of just something brand new, much like what season one was. Season one was a lot of brand new stuff, a lot of brand new interpretation. Yeah, it was. And so, right. so I think season two is kind of playing off some stuff that we've seen before. Um, so I think it's going to help with people that get into it more. Um, I think some of the, like, like I said, some of the studios that we've seen do other big projects may mm-hmm. catch on and may have something else down the road, I think. If yeah, that if, would be cool. Yeah, if it even happens, but I think this is all a big, um, like a big interview. Just what basically see yeah. who's who's doing what. Does it hit big anywhere? Do they make um lo- like a longer series run um of just specifically to a region and not like mm-hmm. yeah? I was gonna say it could be regional too. Yeah, yeah. So where like your your IP address says you're in like a certain Asian country, then you're only able to see this part. And then so, Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> no, I mean, they, I don't know if they'll do that uh, right away. They already do but, that. They already do that with they, the books and, with, and comics. Yeah. And what's the Asian, uh, the Chinese book that, uh, Oh, it's sort of, uh, silver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the silver vow. Is that it? That Howard I don't know. I don't know. Or something? It's yeah. a Canon yeah. book though, isn't it? It's Canon. It, I'm pretty sure. It, it, sure. Yeah. There's, there's a, I'm pretty sure it's Canon. I could be wrong. I can't remember. It's a I'm high Republic. Wrong. Chinese novel that has almost been translated completely. It is unsure whether it's canon or not. Even Matt Martin is flimsy on it. I know. And the people wow. yeah. translating it. Oh, Silver Dawn. Thank you, Stephanie. I know it sucks. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> the so Battle of Silver Dawn. Of Silver Dawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, this is a, I don't know if it's canon or legends or what. It's But like this already happens. And, you know, huh. different people around the world are not getting the same Star Wars. It's if if some of us get to go to celebration japan i'm very interested to see what it's like because i bet yeah. there is a very different uh cultural feel just like walking around the floor than it mm. does at than it feels at la or, or London, yeah you know what i mean i think it's gonna be different because i don't know different angles you know you yeah see different looks different at the same angles. mythology yeah right. cosplay is gonna be fire though oh my oh, yeah. god <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> sensational yeah too. i'm god i want to Hoping for that, and and I think for so. this for this, however, I love the idea of the audition because I think that as of right now, we don't know what's happening with Bad Batch, we don't know what's happening with future Star Wars animation, but I think there will always be a long form animation show from here on out. Clone Wars proved people wanted it. Bad Batch, even though it had some more highs and lows, <clears throat> still was pretty popular, I think. And I would love to get like full season orders or something from some of these studios just to keep Star Wars animation pushing forward. Give them some canon stories in these styles. Do a season, great. Do another show, canon, like more limited series kind of things. Like Obi-Wan was a limited series. I know we all want a season two, but that's also fine. We can do smaller stories in the canon. So I'd like that. Similar to you guys, though, even after talking about them, I'm probably not going to revisit these a ton, and that's okay. I'm glad they exist. I'm glad I get to watch them and experience something and learn more. Like I'm going to watch those behind the scenes now. 
I want to learn more as a person who takes in a lot of media. And that's always fun. You know, I don't need to watch the same stuff all the time. But overall, um, it's nice. So have these conversations. If Visions is your thing, that's great. If you want to skip it, hey, no pressure, man. You're paying for Disney Plus either way. So they don't really care. <laughs> um, right. Without ads, I assume. Exactly. Who, who would do that? Oh, we, no. live in a, we live in a society. <laughs> we're not bringing ads in here. Uh, but next week, we're going to finish these up. We're going to watch the next five. So make sure to get those in before next Monday night or next Thursday, Friday, if you're listening. Um, and make sure to stay tuned to utini.com for all the stuff we got coming with you every single week. What's up, Doc? <laughs> Hi, buddy. Doc, the adorable dog. His eyes. I can say he looks Look like the him. witch. <laughs> looks like the witch in that story. You can't see anything but his eyes. Look at him. He's scary back there. You see his eyes and his little mouth. Oh my God! He's, All right, Wes is about to become a Sith apprentice. Uh, look at me, look um, at me, Dad! I'm a star. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, on that one, uh, Wes, good luck with your upcoming battle. But thank you to all of you for tuning in because that is going to do it for this week's episode of The Living Force. If you support us on Patreon, thank you so much. Keep an eye out this week for all the stuff we're dropping for you, and we hope you enjoy. A special thank you to Brian Dooley, Earl Q, Carl Sander, Zach W., and Michael Fry on our Jedi High Council, and James T., Ashley Ingalls, Colton Fife, and Chris Carrizo on our Alliance High Command. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Eric Eilerson. Corey is at Corey M. Helton. Wes is at Boss West. And Timothy is at TC Guthrie 2. A special thank you to Matt Davenport, our amazing editor. Ryan, our graphic designer extraordinaire. And Wes, our producer and community manager. Thank you to Corey, Tim, and Wes for podcasting with me tonight. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. Heat and 7. And as always, may the forest be with you.